Praise the Lord and welcome to Sunday Morning Christian Education. My name is Tere DeLoach. I attend Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church located on 4781 Hamilton Avenue in Cincinnati, Ohio where Bishop James Chapman is the pastor and our First Lady, Lady Robin Chapman. And where there is a God in Bethlehem and Jesus is his name. Today's lesson is called A High Calling and it comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 16. The golden text reads, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. And that's Ephesians 4 and 1. Ernest Angeli wrote a book called Yield to the High Calling of God. In that book, he says, The high calling of God is not just an ordinary call, but a special call from heaven. It requires going beyond and what may be considered acceptable, and into a life of total surrender to the will of God. You must be willing to suffer, to endure all things, and to pay any price for Christ's sake, for Christ's namesake. He continued on and said, Those following, following the high calling of God are called out people from a called out people. Hmm. Our lesson states that Paul made an urgent appeal for unity as we pursue our high calling in Christ. He realized unity is so important and disunity is so damaging to a church. He challenged the Ephesus believers to live in a manner consistent with the high calling they had received from Christ. Paul said since they had been called to be followers of Christ, they should live like Christ. We call that being Christ-like. Paul identified four Christ-like attitudes that leads to unity. Number one is humility. He says, since Christ is humble, we should be humble. Jesus, with humility, was willing to give up the glories of heaven and become a humble servant. Paul said in Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. A humble person is willing to do whatever needs to be done. A proud person spreads disunity because he wants all the attention. A humble person is more concerned with the approval of Christ than with the acclaim of other people in the church. The second Christ-like attitude that leads to unity is gentleness, which is called meekness. The popular view is that meek means weak. Someone who is really easily pushed around. However, a true meek person is not weak and cowardly. Don't get it twisted. He does not need to prove himself to himself or to anyone else because he has an inner strength. Watch out now. A meek Christian does not insist on demanding his rights. He is able to bear the slights and insults of others without striking back or retaliating, which leads to the third Christ-like attitude that leads to unity. And that's patient, patience, called long-suffering. Christ did not get angry and strike back at his enemies. He responded with patience and compassionate love. We must show that same kind of patience with people who do and say things that hurt us, including people in the church. In the Bible it says, I was wounded in the house of my friends. 
Okay, the fourth like Christ-like attitude that leads to unity is forbearance, which means restraint and tolerance. When we follow the example of Christ, we are able to bear with the faults and failures and shortcomings of others. After all, we're not perfect either. To avoid disunity, we must make every effort to keep the bond of peace we receive through Christ's death. Living by Christ's examples produces unity and a peaceable atmosphere. But we know some people will just do what they want to do. But they are free to make their own choices and have their own responses. We're not a cult. But there are always some people who would just love chaos and drama. All we can do is control our own actions. And don't be messy. Paul said, Unity in the church is like the human body. Just as the human body has one head, so the church has one head. Jesus Christ. Just as the human body has many parts, so the church has many members. All the parts of the body are united under the central control of the brain. Similar, all members of the church are under the central control of Christ. If your fingers stop responding to messages from your brain, something is seriously wrong. Same with the church. If the members of the church do not follow instructions coming from Christ, something is seriously wrong. At the very least, that means there is a lack of unity in the church. Paul says, there is one body, and that one body is empowered and energized by one source, the Holy Spirit. The one hope of deliverance from this world, which is Jesus Christ. There must be unity in the church in terms of the foundational beliefs of the Christian faith. There are many churches, there are, I'm sorry, there are many church denominations, but all Bible believing church Christians agree that there is one Lord. A firm belief that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior should unite all true Christians around the world. As believers, we have the assurance that we have been adopted into God's family. Therefore, since God is our Father, we are reunited as brothers and sisters. Because of God's gift of grace, we get God's best gift, salvation. However, God has given us other gifts. One, Christ called and gifted some in the church to be apostles. And that is one who sit, one who is sent out on an official mission. Jesus' disciples were the original apostles. The apostles served as the foundation of the church. Second, Christ called and gifted some in the church to be prophets. One who speaking forth God inspired messages. In today's world, pastors largely fulfill the prophetic function since they receive messages from God and declare these messages to God's people. Third, Christ called and gifted some in the church to be evangelists messenger of good news. In the early church, evangelists were traveling spreaders of the gospel message. They still spread the good news of the gospel today. Fourth, Christ called out, I mean, fourth, Christ called and gifted some in the church to be pastors and teachers, or the lesson says, pastors slash teachers. Pastors are shepherds. God called ministers who provide spiritual leadership for local churches. Much as a shepherd leads and cares for his sheep. 
A pastor is the primary Christian educator in the church. Spirit-filled pastors and teachers serve as stabilizers elements in the church. Under the ministry of gifted pastors and teachers, the members of the church grow towards spiritual maturity. Christ's plan for the church, for his church, is to become a productive and full functioning spiritual organism. This happens when we become spiritually mature and then use our own spiritual gifts to become productive agents of ministry. Every Christian or believer has a calling. This is a lifelong calling that we always follow but never completely fulfill on this side of eternity. You can't run away from it. You can't quit. You can't hide. As Bishop say, level up. I hope I put something on your mind. Until next time, God bless.